Well, thank you. I'm so happy uh, to be here and, and present on uh, uh, fitness for the adults, um, uh, older adults, uh, and in particular, looking at fitness fitness assessments that you can do at home. So let's uh, let's jump right into it. So aging, let's just talk about aging in general. You know, uh, aging is things get harder sometimes as we age, and some things get easier. But but in our bodies, uh, you have wear and tear and miles. Uh, you need to uh, look at, you know, do I need to repair? Do I need to do maintenance type of things? So let's just talk about aging in general. Um, and particularly if uh, we, you fall into that uh, um, pit of uh, inactivity. Um, so let's talk about what happens when that, you do that. So the bad things about uh, inactivity and aging is there's a negative change in body composition. So basically, you could weigh the same. You could weigh 180 pounds when you were 30, but you also weigh 180 pounds when you are 70, but your body composition probably will have changed to where more of that mass when you're in your 70s is going to be a visceral fat or fat versus muscle. So you, your body composition can change. Um, you can lose um, loss of a skeletal mass. You know, you have people, uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll work with patients and when we're taking a history, you know, we're looking at their height and weight, they'll say, well, you know, I was 5'5", five five, and now I'm 5'3". And, and that is a thing. So our skeletal system can uh, um, shrink in a sense, in particular, uh, you know, your spine, as the, the discs, uh, the little spongy cushions between your bones uh, lose fluid, and you can actually lose height. So, and then there's uh, osteoarthritis and joint pain. So, um, uh, arthritis is kind of a general term, so there's different types of arthritis, but osteoarthritis, or OA, is a type of arthritis that we get with aging. So it's just basically wear and tear. So if you think about your joints again, like you think about a car, uh, you know, the more that you drive uh, the car, the treads of the wheels wear down, very similar to our, our joint surfaces. Um, so they, they wear down, and, and it can cause some, some pain. Um, you can lose some flexibility, so uh, uh, get your stiffness. Um, and then you have an increased risk of disease and disability uh, as you get older. And then ultimately, uh, you could lose uh, function and uh, you know, some independence. So things that you used to be able to do, you might not be able to do anymore. So now that I have you completely depressed, uh, let's talk about what we can do about it. And there is an a, a anti-aging miracle pill. And it is called exercise, basically exercise, diet, and then mental stimulation. So uh, everything we talked about can be uh, delayed, prevented, or reversed in, in, in some instances. So uh, let's just talk about the good news now. So uh, seven benefits of, of exercise, and this is uh, those sources from the Mayo Clinic. Uh, exercise can control your weight, so it can keep you at, at a healthy weight and keep you uh, active. It can, it can combat health conditions and disease, so, you know, heart disease, diabetes. Uh, it can improve your mood, um, boost your energy. Uh, exercise or, you know, full day of activity will help you sleep better. And quality of sleep is, is, is very important for any, any age, especially as we age. Um, can put a, a spark back in your sex life. And, uh, and exercise can be fun. It's, it's a social, social outlet. So what's the goal then? The, the goal is you want to die young as old as possible, okay? Um, and we're going to talk about uh, how we define fitness and then what we can do to do that. Um, I have to tell you, so I, I, I work out regularly. I, I usually work out at 6 a.m. in the Windward YMCA. And I am probably, I'm 55 years old, uh, for the record, and I'm probably the youngest person <laughs> during 6 and 7.30 working out. So uh, all the people that are in the gym with, uh, that are working out are in their 70s and 80s and, and are, are, are really, they're, they're, they're living, wanting to uh, die young as old as possible. So it can be done and it's being done. So how do we define fitness, right? So here's just a quick little cartoon, you know, check out my left gun, check out my right gun, check out my back muscles, you know, uh, look at my legs, I'm strong. Does this look like a guy who's not in shape, right? And you see his big uh, opu. Um, so, so how do we do? You know, how how do we know if we're fit or not? And that and that's what we're going to really talk about um, during this talk. It, it, things that you can do at home to basically identify the areas of fitness that you're doing well at, and and maybe the areas of fitness that uh, 
could use a little bit of help. So uh, there's some categories of health. So we're going to talk about strength. And uh, I'm going to preach a lot about function. Uh, you know, my background is a physical therapist. So, you know, we, we talk about function, function, function. Um, cardiovascular fitness or aerobic fitness, uh, we're going to look at that. Flexibility and then a little bit with body composition. And then back to function, right? So uh, for many, this might as well be Mount Everest, right? So if we don't take care of our bodies, they, they won't take care of us, and we can lose the ability to do things that, that we want to do. So fitness assessment we can do at home. Uh, we're going to start with strength, and then we're going to go down this whole menu, flexibility, cardio, uh, fitness, and then body composition. So let's start with uh, strength. And again, uh, a physical therapist, function, function, function. We're going to look at functional leg strength. And one way that you can test this at home, and everything that we're going to go over today, you don't need fancy equipment. You know, the fancy equipment you need is a, a tape measure, um, a watch, and a chair. And if you have that, you'll be able to do 100% of these, these home tests that we're going to do. So the first one is um, functional legs uh, test. So it's basically going from sitting to standing, and you're going to fold your arm, and you're going to sit down, and you want to sit in a chair that is not too high. So the average chair is about 17, 18 inches from the floor. Uh, so you have, if you have an average kind of folding chair, that would work. And you basically are going to go from sitting to standing without using your arms as many times as you can for 30 seconds. And so I'll just demonstrate that, and then, uh, um, we'll, then we'll talk about uh, the results. Okay, so uh, right now we're going to demonstrate the functional uh, leg strength test. And so basically you're going to get a chair. Um, if you have a chair without arms, that, that's, that's good as well. Um, and what you're going to do is we're going to go sitting to standing. We're going to fold our, ar our arms across our body. Okay, you're going to lean forward and you're going to stand up. And back down, you're going to do this for 30 seconds. And then you're going to count how many you do within that period of time. Okay, again... Very important to try to do it without your arms. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate one more thing. Some people, as they get older, have a difficult time getting up from a chair. And the lower the surface, the harder it is to get up. Uh, one one uh, strategy you can use is um, you want to sit up nice and tall, okay? Because if you're in a slump position, you got a lot further to go up. And you want to get your nose past your toes before you start standing up. Uh, if you're one of those people who have a hard time, especially from low services, you might have experienced something like this, where you try to get up and it, it kind of push you backwards. What's happening is your center of gravity is behind your base of support. When you're using your muscles, it's pushing you back. If you bring your center of gravity forward, nose past your toes, then when you use your muscles, it brings you straight up. One tip. So uh, after performing that, that test, so here are the results to um, uh, see where you, you fall in. And it is by age group. So uh, if you're 60 to 64, then you should be able to do 19 or greater, uh, and so on and so forth. So this will give you a, a good idea of what your functional strength is for your legs. So this is like your ability to go up and down stairs, and get in and out of a, a car with a low C to those types of things. So... If you uh, are above these numbers, awesome. And if you're not, that's something that we'll, we'll talk about a little later on, what you can do to, uh, to, to get there. And here are the results for, for the women. I'll leave that up there for a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna talk about cardiovascular fitness or aerobic fitness. So. Um, again, we're trying to show you everything that you can do at home, uh, so you don't need a treadmill and, and you, know, you don't need to be outside or you don't need to be hooked up to any, any uh, special equipment. Um, so this one does uh, require a high-tech uh, equipment of a tape measure um, and, uh, and a wall, and that's basically all you need to do. And so um, I'm going to demonstrate here in just a minute, but basically you're going to uh, mark a spot on the wall that's the height uh, in between your pelvis and your rib cage, okay? So, um, and, and what you're gonna do is right between those two, so if you go to the bottom of your rib cage, you can feel it, and then if you, ever, if you put your hands on your hips and push down, that, that's your pelvis, and so right between the two is what you're gonna measure 
against a, a wall, okay? And then when you're doing the test, you're going to basically, again, we're gonna, it's gonna be for time. So we're gonna do a two minutes. So you're gonna start your watch for two minutes and you're gonna basically march in place and every time that, that tape mark on the wall at your right knee, you probably can't see it in here, um, hits the wall, um, you, will, you will count for one. So it'll be one, two, three, and so forth until the two minutes expire. Okay, and then after that, we'll, uh, you'll uh, uh, count what your tally is and, and see where you, you fall on the scale of, of fitness. So let's look at what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and quick do a demonstration and then we'll look at the, uh, the results for you. So uh, the, the next demonstration is the cardiovascular aerobic fitness. Okay, so basically you're gonna uh, get a piece of tape or you know, if you have the luxury of having a chalkboard or something, you can use that. You're going to uh, measure from your uh, pelvis. So if you put your hands on your hips and push down and feel that, that ledge or the bone, that's the top of your pelvis. And if you feel underneath your ribs, your last rib, you're gonna measure in between, roughly in between those two. Okay, and you're gonna put that mark or piece of tape on the wall. So that would be roughly here for me. So that, there's my mark. And what we're going to do is you're going to uh, start your, your stopwatch or your phone, and you're going to do it for two minutes. And you, what we're going to do is we're going to go up. Okay, and every time your right leg, you can alternate right and left, but every time your right leg makes it up to that mark, you're going to count it. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and so on for two minutes. Then you're going to tally your score, and then we'll... We'll look in at the results and see where you uh, where you line up. So here's the results for the men. So again, 60 to 64, you should be able to do over 115. Again, with your right your right knee hitting that mark, and and so on and so forth there as you go all the way down to uh, into your 90s. And then I'll leave that up here for a second, and then we'll look at the women's. So not a huge difference between the men and the women, but there is statistically a, a difference. Okay, flexibility. Um, so flexibility is super important, and, and the, the test that we're going to use, there's flexibility in all your joints, right? We're going to focus on flexibility in basically your lower leg or your hamstring uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, and one reason is that's one of the major culprits for, for or precursor for back pain. If, you're, if your hamstring's really tight, um, and men, typically we are more tight than women. Uh, um, and so, uh, and typically a lot of times we may have more uh, back pain issues with that. Um, so this particular test, uh, I'm gonna demonstrate here in just a minute, but basically you're gonna sit down on, on again, a regular you know, folding chair. You're gonna have your, the le one leg straight and one leg bent, and then you're going to put your hands together, and you're going to bend forward at your hips, not your back, and you're going to reach as far as you can towards your toes. So your goal is to either reach your toes um, or surpass your toes, and then that's what we're going to measure. So if you make it to your toes, you're going to measure zero. If you are two inches past your toes, you'll, you'll get a score of two, if you don't make your toes and you're four inches away, then you will get a negative four. So that's how you score it. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that and then we'll, we'll look at the results. Okay, this uh, next uh, demonstration is on uh, low, lower body flexibility. In particular, we're, we're looking at the hamstring. Um, as we mentioned, the hamstring is kind of a culprit for for uh, restriction of movement and back pain for a lot of people. So you're gonna put um, one leg flat and then one leg you're gonna put uh, straight out. So we're gonna, for, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna put my um, left leg flat. You're gonna put, straighten out your right leg. You can sit up nice and tall. Okay, so you don't wanna be in the slouch position. You're gonna put your hands together like this and you're going to bend at your hips and you're gonna reach as far as you can 
to and hopefully past your toes. Okay? Now, it's really important to try to bend at your hips because you, if, if you're not here at your, your back, you want to you kind of lock your back in so you have this nice, nice little curve in your back. You want to hold that curve and, and bend at your hips. So how this works is to measure, if you make it to your toes, that is zero. Every inch that you go past your toes, you get a point. So if you're four inches past your toes, um, then you get a point for, for, let's say four inches, you get four points. Okay? If you do not make it to your toes, you're in a negative territory. So if you're two inches from your fingertips to your toes, then that's a negative. So if you're two inches, uh, from there, it's minus two. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and try that at home and then we'll look at the results and you can tally where you're at. All right, so uh, let's get back and, and uh, let's look at the results. So uh, for the man to sit and reach test, um, you, you want to uh, have four or greater. So that's, that's four inches past your toes uh, for the 60 to 64 age group. And then it goes, it goes on down. Um, so, it, uh, so for the most part, unless you're in your 90s, um, you, you should be able to surpass your toes. Um, and I, I will tell you right now that there'll be a lot of you that won't be able to do that. And, and we're going we're gonna to show some things that will, will help you with that uh, later in the presentation. And here's the results for the women. I'll leave that up there for a second so you guys can find your uh, age group. Okay, body composition. So we talk about body composition, uh, you know, basically, you know, your, your ratio uh, of muscle to fat. Um, a lot of people in a lot of old, you know, insurance companies back in the day, some may still use it, will use a BMI. Um, and some doctors at the end of the day use the BMI. The problem with the BMI is it doesn't account for body composition. So it's looking at height weight ratios but it's not accounting for, well, is that weight fat or is that weight more muscle? I'll give you an example. I am six foot two, 220 pounds. And if you look at the BMI for me, I'm borderline obese, you know, according to the BMI. You know, so so it's, it's not a great, it's a, it, it has a purpose, and, 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 uh, but it's not a really great tool for a judgment of overall health. Um, other ways to look at body composition uh, in labs, probably the most accurate, but the most expensive and impractical to do um, is hydrostatic weighing. So they actually put you into a tank, you're breathing out your, your, your uh, the air, and, and they, they can weigh you there. Um, some of you have might experience uh, uh, fitness professionals or doctors doing skin calipers. Um, and the problem with that is that it's, 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 the accuracy is really dependent upon the person who's testing. Um, and, and so if you have five different people testing you, you may you really may get five different results. So, um, and then there's another way to do it. It's called electrical impedance, um, where they actually run, uh, uh, there's a little machine, and they put a, a, a little electrode on your fingers and electrodes on your toes, and they run a little current through you, and it measures the resistance uh, to the current, and, and it lets you know what your body fat per, per, uh, um, Percentage is because uh, the resistance to muscle and fat, are, it, it, it reads it differently. And then what we're going to do at home, obviously none of those things you can do at home, is we're going to do some circumference uh, ratios. So this is where we're going to pull out our high-tech equipment of our tape measure, and we're going to do that. So the first one, this is from the Harvard Medical School, is a waist-to-hip ratio. So it's an indicator of your level of your visceral fat. Okay, this is the dangerous belly fat that uh, is linked to a diabetes and cancer and heart disease, right? So, so if you carry your fat, you know, some people are just kind of be big and some people really just carry it right here in their opu, um, then, then that, you know, statistically you may be more at risk. So we want to measure that fat. So, so how you do the measurement is we're going to measure your waist. So again, this is going to be the midpoint between your lowest rib and your pelvis that we did on, uh, on the earlier test. So again, if you put your hands here on the shelf of your hips and, and, and here, then you would measure your circumference all the way around. Okay. Um, and then you're going to measure the, the widest part of your hips. And then you're going to divide the, the, the waist measurement 
by the hip ratio and, and you want to aim to be at 0.9 or lower. So if you're 1.0 or higher, then, then, um, then your body composition is going to be uh, not as healthy <laughs> as you want it to be, okay? And we'll talk about how to do that. So, okay, uh, the next uh, me uh, uh, measurement is waist to height ratio, okay? A little bit uh, similar to uh, BMI, but not exactly, but we are using height. Uh, it's a better indicator than BMI for predicting uh, risk of heart disease, uh, stroke, death from heart disease. Uh, so again, we're gonna do that, that uh, waist measurement. So again, that midpoint between your um, pelvis and your rib cage. So we're gonna measure that again. And then you're gonna measure your height and you're gonna divide your weight your waist measurement by your height for the ratio. And again, you want it to be at 0.5 or lower. So if you are 0.5 or lower, you're, you're, you're good. And if you're a little bit higher, then again, uh, you're probably a little heavier than you need to be, or your ratio of fat to muscle is, is maybe putting you at a little bit more risk uh, for some health issues. So, and again, we're gonna talk about some things you can do to uh, help with that. So those are basically the, 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 the tests that you could do at home. Now we're going to talk about um, what you can do, you know, how you can take that information and pragmatically use it to improve your overall health. And again, we're going to look at the same areas. We're going to look at uh, what you can do for strength, uh, posture. We're going to talk a lot about posture, uh, function and balance, um, weight loss maybe if you need to, um, and then, then flexibility. So strength, uh, you know, strength is really important, right? Especially as we age, right? So it's a, strength is the kind of the precursor to, to movement, right? You have to have enough strength to uh, uh, do a lot of things, right? Even to, uh, you know, it's, it's simply is getting up from a lower surface. So as you age, and maybe if you have some arthritis in your joints and you're sitting in, in a surface that's lower, so where your, 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 your hips are lower than your knees, um, um, it, it, sometimes it's hard to get up. You need to have the strength, right? So, so strength is really important. Um, resistive training, so like lifting weights, is a very safe mode for, for seniors. So uh, I, I've been a physical therapist for over 30 years, and, uh, you know, first 10 years of, of my career, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're treating seniors with kid gloves, right? Oh, you know, they can't, they can't lift weights. You know, they're going to hurt themselves. And, and uh, that's bunk. That's been debunked. Um, the, uh, there were a lot of uh, research studies that were done that showed completely the opposite. Um, so strength training is, is, is a safe mode of exercise, and, and I really highly encourage it to maybe be the starting point. Uh, of a program. The other thing about strength is, especially, you know, at any time, but especially as we age, the stronger that the muscles are around your joint, the less likely you may have issues with arthritis, right? So, so basically your muscles are acting like an internal brace and in, in giving you support. Um, and then the other thing too is, is that, that if you, you, you start lifting weights um, and, and doing um, resistive type of exercise, uh, you're going to change your body composition, right? So you, you may gain a little bit more muscle. Um, and, and so lean muscle, or muscle in general, is metabolically uh, expensive for calories, right? So, so your body has to exert calories to maintain the muscle. So if you can gain a little bit of muscle uh, weight, um, then you're actually going to burn more calories at rest because it takes energy to maintain those muscles where there takes zero calories to uh, maintain fat. So, um, and the other thing too, if you think about it, we, you know, um, after age 30, we start losing uh, muscle cells. So if, if, um, if you are losing muscle cells as you age, if, after every year by, you know, starting at 30, and then you're inactive and not working out, you know, you could be in a place that you don't want to be and, and find out, you know, I can't do things that I used to do. So, so, the good news is if you went down that path, as long as you have a, a neurological system intact where you can use your muscles, you can gain some of that back. So, so even, uh, even if you've been inactive, uh, you can start with a strength program and slowly actually re start reversing some of those. 
All right. So the principles of a good resistive program, uh, you know, uh, pre-screen, you know, make, make sure that, you know, you got clearance from your physician. Um, the, the premise of, of getting stronger is progressive resistive exercise. They call it PRE or, you know, or a load. Um, you basically are stressing the muscle and it's responding by getting stronger. So if you are doing an activity and um, it, you're, you're not using a high enough load, you may not be getting all the benefits that you think you are because you, you do you want to have a safe uh, load that or you know resistance that, that's a little bit difficult so your body's uh, forced to make the positive changes, right? You don't want to overload it like doing too much. You could hurt yourself, but you do need to have enough of a load, and we'll talk about how to gear that. Uh, so you are, your body is forced to make the positive changes you want to make. Um, um, so, uh, um, so when you're, I'll give you an example after we talk about the sets and reps. So, let's say what you're doing in the gym, and we're, I'll just use curls for an example. Uh, so, uh, so uh, sets and reps. So, uh, um, one set of ten would be doing this, t you know, curl ten times. Let's say we have a five pound dumbbell, so we'll go one, two all the way up to 10, that would be one set of 10. Okay, so, so generally for seniors and, and people that are starting, uh, that are inactive and are, are just now starting resist the program, um, typically I keep them at, 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 at a maximum of three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions. And the reason I do 10 to 12 repetitions is that it's gonna be light enough that you can do 10 or 12 repetitions so you're not gonna overstress you know, and injure yourself but you want it heavy enough to where, you know, 13 and 14 may be really hard, so you have enough of a stress to um, um, have force the body to make the positive changes that you want. So, so those are kind of the guides that we use for resistance and, and for sets and reps. Typically, I'll have people start with one to two uh, sets for a couple of weeks so they just get used to the exercise and, and do good proper uh, uh, technique uh, for the exercise. Um, the gains that you initially make in strength actually are not, uh, in at least the first like couple weeks or a month, are not actually changes in your muscle. It's, they're actually changes in your nervous system. So, so uh, by doing the different movements or exercise and you're doing it uh, with repetition, um, your nervous system is learning that skill of that movement and you'll get stronger from just, from just that. And then after that point, you'll make uh, gains will be a little bit slower. That'll be actual changes in, in the, in the, within the muscle itself. Um, so uh, rest is important. So uh, in between exercises, I, I always have, you want to rest one to two minutes in between sets, right? So you don't over fatigue. Um, and then uh, for resistive exercise, you really don't want to do it more than three times a week. You know, so uh, uh, you like that you need that day of rest in between so your body can recover. Because basically when you're doing resistive training, you're kind of, kind of in essence, kind of breaking down and it's building back up. And if you don't allow for that rest, that building back up time, uh, uh, you're going to be uh, uh, maybe overtraining and missing some of the, 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 the benefits. Uh, and the mode of exercise, um, it, it could be anything. So you could be uh, going to a gym, as we talked about. It could be getting TheraBand which are resistive bands, and there's different colors for different types of resistance. It could be lifting uh, canned goods. Um, you know, uh, it could be using water uh, of resistance in, in a pool or in the ocean. Um, so, so really, you know, the mode of exercise, what I, how I recommend is do something that, you, you know, or do it where you like, you know, so you're, it, it's fun and it's easy. Uh, for you, so there's really not a you know wrong or right answer for for the mode. So, and then specific exercises we're going to talk about uh, uh, when I get into the posture section because um, I, I do really have a bias on on where what you should uh, focus on for for the for exercises. And here, this is just a chart of what we talked about uh, uh, of weights and uh, reps. So uh, we talked about function. So uh, uh, basically, the test that you did earlier for uh, your leg strength, functional leg strength, was sitting to standing. So basically, it's equivalent of a squat. So uh, if that was difficult for you, or you know you're, you didn't do as many as the chart said you should be at, 
Um, this is something you can simply work, work on at home. If you have a hard time doing it with your arms folded, you can always start with your arms. And then when you get to the point where you can do it without your arms, then, then you can progress to that. Uh, but you want to think about function. Now, uh, I promise you to get to posture. Uh, if you've been to a physical therapist, you, you probably realize they're like the posture police. You know, posture is, uh, is a big deal for us. So, you know, your back will tell you that Sister Anne Marie was right. So, um, so posture is um, very important at any age. Uh, and the earlier that you watch your posture, the better off you're going to be as we age. So, so what happens is, you know, when we start out, um, you know, our bodies are designed pretty well, okay? And so um, if we drop a, 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 a strain down with a the weight, they call a plumb line, um, your, your ear, your shoulder, all your joints, your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your ankle would all be in one line, okay? And, and the, the importance of that is, is that our skeletal system when we have good posture and we, we maintain that good posture, mechanically, it, 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 it protects our joints. There are all kinds of shock absorbers in your, your, your joints, so your knee joint, your hip joint, your back. And when you uh, lose alignment, let's see if I can turn here where you see me sideways, and, and you, you're, you're like this type of posture, now you're no longer mechanically stacked. And you're, um, and you're putting greater stresses on your, your low back and your upper back. And if you perpetually uh, get into this position, what can happen is that it can become uh, partially permanent or, 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 or fixed, uh, fixed deformity. So you'll see some people who will have that kind of hump back or, or, or their, their shoulders are rolled in. And your doctors will describe that as a kyphosis. Um, that's what you want to kind of prevent because when you lose good posture, it's going to put stress on on your joints, so it uh, may progress arthritis. But also, it's going to help you know going to lose function. So, so for example, if if you if you slouch in your chair or if you're at home right now and you roll your shoulders in, okay, just kind of roll them in, and then try to lift up your arms and see how high you can go. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and try that. Okay, and this is literally as high as I can go. Now, if I change my posture back to uh, you know a good posture, uh, I can come up here. I'm not impinging. I'm not stressing. So so posture is super 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 important. It'll keep you out of trouble. So so here's a few exercises you can do for posture. Um, uh, a wall is really good um, to, to do. Um, let me go back on this one. Um, so if you get up against a wall, a good way to, to kind of practice this and, and actually maybe assess your, 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 your posture is uh, stand against a wall or, or a door that's shut and uh, put your heels, your coli, your shoulders, and your head all in contact. So if you can't do that, then, then you know you got a little bit of a posture thing you need to work on if you, you can't. Make contact with your head, your shoulder blades, your acole, and your heels. Um, you know, then that's you know, we, we definitely going to want to work on that. Um, and and but just holding this position against the wall for some people, it, it, it you're you're kind of retraining your postural muscles. It gives you kind of a, a tactile cue, right? It gives you a target to to work on. And, and some people that that have a tendency to kind of slouch. It, it, when they're trying to do this against the wall, it almost feels to them like they're uh, like somebody's behind them pushing them forward. So, so this is a good one to do. Is just hold this position and then and then try to move. So you can use your dynamically, okay. And then also with your legs, you could shift your weight and lift your leg, shift, lift your leg, and, and then you, uh, you just keep on progressing where you're doing both. And, and keeping contact with the wall. So that's a way to kind of kind of wake up and, and retrain your postural muscles to work a little bit. And again, something that you can easily uh, do at home. So in regards to when we talk about strength exercises, um, I, I really target on muscles that help you with posture. So, so typically what happens is um, for, for the average person who has some uh, postural deficits, Typically, they're, they're going to be 
where they're kind of rolled in. So all your kind of anterior muscles tend to be tight and your posterior muscles behind you tend to be stretched and a little bit weaker. And so, so you really want to focus on those posterior or, po or postural muscles. Uh, so instead of like doing a lot of, you know, front stuff like bench press or curls, you want to maybe do the opposite of, you know, a rowing machine where you are, you're really working these postural muscles more. Uh, another example is your hip, right? So, uh, uh, so hip extension. So this example here um, on the slide is a, is a bridge. So basically you're, you're, uh, you're laying down with your knees bent and you're lifting your acole up and bringing it back down. So you're really strengthening your, your uh, hip extensors for that. This is one that, that you can try hanging off the edge of your bed. Um, and and um, this is called, I call this Superman. And then, uh, then there's airplane, I'm gonna show you, but this will give you kind of assessment of, uh, of, of your posture as well. If you cannot bring your arms to the same level, you know, or, or close to your ears or, or your elbow when you're doing this, uh, then, then you really need to maybe work on stretching your, your, your anterior deltoid in your chest and strengthening your back. And, and this is actually a strengthening exercise. So you're gonna, you're gonna lay on the corner of your bed, your arms are dangling and you're gonna bring them up like you're Superman. Okay, you're not gonna extend your head out because you don't wanna hyperextend your neck. You're, gonna, you're gonna basically gonna be looking down, kind of keeping your, your head level with your body and, and, and trying to bring your arms up from, from that laying down position. And so that's an exercise. If you can do that and, and uh, you wanna strengthen it, um, you have to go really light with weight, like one pound, <laughs> because that's a long lever arm. If you, if you grab and you put weight here on that, on that muscle, that's a really long lever arm. So it'll be more difficult than you, than you think. I used to train um, lifters for the Paralympics and, and they would do bench press. And um, when they would plateau, and these are big guys, right? And uh, I would always make them do their back exercises before I let them go on the bench. And uh, um, that way they maintain a muscle balance, right? So the whole thing is if you overwork one side of your body, you're gonna, you're gonna have a muscle imbalance or bad posture. So you wanna kind of restore uh, your muscle balance. Um, one, one more posture thing, and I, I, I should have put a slide in here, but I'm gonna demonstrate it instead is uh, um, especially now with Zoom, and, and I'm, <laughs> we're, we're on that right now, um, or just even you know FaceTime and all that, we're spending a lot of time in front of screens, a lot of times in front of computers, and, and, um, and you're, there's a lot of people who are getting issues with kind of upper back and neck pain and shoulder pain, basically from, from being in these positions for a very long period of time. And it, it, you know, it, so it, it, you'll see a lot of people when you're doing, especially if you're doing a lot of computer computer work or doing a lot of zooming, that you know you're 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 in this position where you're 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 hyperextending your head, looking at the screen, and, and this. So you really want to watch your posture when you're you're doing a lot of uh, uh, if you're doing spending a lot of time on the computer. You really want to try to to uh, to sit up tall and have a good arch support in your back for your chair, and, and really. Uh, Try to maintain your head to where it's not forward, where it's mechanically stacked over your body. So um, people who come in and actually have a lot of neck and upper back, and uh, what we call scapular pain, um, a simple way to reduce that is we're spending a lot of time in front of the computer. So for every 10 minutes you're in front of the computer, take 10 seconds, and you're going to do what we call a chin retraction, where you're going to... Um, kind of basically do the opposite of what you're doing. So this is a forward head position. A chin retraction is just bringing your chin in. So you're not extending up like you get a ceiling. You're kind of you're just kind of pulling it in. Okay, I call it the judge kind of posture. Uh, um, if you do that every 10 seconds for 10 minutes that you're on the computer, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're consistent with doing that, I guarantee you that 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 pain that you are feeling is going to be a lot less and in a lot of circumstances will go away. So, so again, posture, posture is really important. So flexibility, we talked about uh, flexibility. We did, the, we did the test you guys did at home with uh, sitting in the chair with your leg extended and, uh, um, and where you tried to reach. So that was looking primarily at your hamstring strength, uh, uh, hamstring length. 
Um, and, and so, um, uh, but we really want to work on flexibility. So I'm going to go through a series of, of, uh, of pictures that will show you the areas that I would recommend you, you really work on. Um, before we do that, <laughs> let's just talk about some general rules. So, so with, with stretching, basically you want to do prolong static stretches, right? So, so you know, you're not going to bounce or do things really quick. You're going to, you're going to put the position, you're going to put yourself in a position of stretch and you're going to hold that position for a long period of time and then you're going to relax. So it's, there's not like these quick kind of movements or bouncing movements. You're going to, you're going to slowly put yourself on stretch, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it and relax. So the kind of the general rule of thumb is you, whatever muscle you're stretching, you want to gradually get it there to where you're, you got it on stretch. You want to hold it for a minimum of 20 seconds and more is better. So basically what you're trying to do is if you have tight muscles, and I'm going to show you some pictures uh, of that, um, then you, 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 want to, you want to change that. So if the muscle's really tight, you're stretching it, you're stretching it, you're stretching it, and you're holding it. And then when you do release it, it doesn't go all the way back. So over time, you can go from this, where every time you move, you know, you're going to maybe get some pain or, or restriction to movement, to over time where you stretch, hold it, hold it, release, stretch, hold it, hold it, release, stretch, hold it, hold it, release. Over a week to two weeks' time, you can actually change the resting length of the mus muscle tissue from here to here, and, and now maybe you won't have, you'll have better posture or have less restrictive movement. So flexibility, again, uh, I harped on posture. Um, uh, you, the areas you really want to focus on is stretching the anterior muscles. So your, your, your chest, your pecs, your uh, anterior deltoid, this whole area here. So one way to stretch it is, you know, just pulling your arms back. You can use a, 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 a cane, um, a stick, and, and, and pull it back and, you, and hold the stretch back, back here, okay? A doorway stretch is another way to do it. You can get into a doorway, kind of lean into it, use your body weight, and just put it on stretch and, and hold it, and just statically let it stretch. And then the other one for your lower extremity, the one that tends to be tight for a lot of people is the hamstring. Um, uh, and, and so we demonstrated that before uh, on, on the, uh, the flexible uh, flexibility test. But basically, you want to put your leg straight, Lean into it by bending at your hips, not, by, not at your back, and then holding that stretch. The, the importance of the hamstring is that, that most people who have low back pain have tight hamstrings. The hamstring is your, your muscle that bends your knee, okay, but it also is attached to your pelvis. So if it's super tight, then it's going to pull back on your pelvis. So every time you move, you're going to have uh, a stress in that area of your low back. If you stretch your hamstring out, then you're going to be able to move greater distances before you encounter that, that, uh, that stress. And so a lot of times, um, uh, mechanical low back pain or muscular pain, um, the culprit is, is a tight hamstring. And if you stretch out your hamstrings, then the pain gradually can go away. Um, again, we talk about you know, flexing over. This is just doing a stretch where you're uh, uh, laying down. You can put your, uh, you know, just your rest on your elbows, or you can push up if you have the flexibility to do that. Again, we spend a lot of time sitting, and if, if, we're, if we're, our posture is a little bit forward, then again, the anterior muscles get tight, so this is a way to kind of stretch out your hips. Okay. And last, we're going to talk about is balance. I'll, I'll show you a few balance exercises you can do at home. So one simple one is just uh, putting... Uh, Try to do a tandem step like you're walking a tightrope uh, or, or a DUI te field test, I guess, <laughs> um, where you just put one foot in front of the other and, and, and try, try to hold it. If your balance is a little off, you can do it where there, you have a chair where you can hold on to or a countertop or even a wall and, and, and try to do that, that, that test or, or that exercise. Um, the other one is just basically balancing on one leg, trying to hold it. And then if that's easy, you can do that and, and do a slight little bend with your knee. And then this one is heel to toe. So this is a really good one to do. And how uh, you can see in this, this picture above me uh, where 
you can have a chair in front of you, okay? And basically you're rocking back on your heels, up on your toes, back on your heels, up on your toes. Um, you, can, you can work on this one where you have a wall behind you and maybe a chair in front of you. So if you go too far back, the wall can catch you. And, and uh, so it's a safe way where you can challenge yourself but not fall, fall backwards. Uh, this is a really good one to do because basically our first strategy that our body uses to, to recover our loss of balance is what they call the ankle strategy. It's the first thing that our body just naturally goes to. So by doing this, um, you know, you're strengthening up that kind of first line of defense from falling. The other thing, too, is if you've been a little bit inactive, just doing this movement can also maybe charge up your vestibular system, a balance uh, center in your brain a little bit. And then this one is just simply marching, again, but holding and pausing it. So similar to just doing a single leg, but a little bit more dynamic. And that's it. So uh, um, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll entertain the uh, questions. And I, I really appreciate your, your, uh, your interest in, in this topic. Uh, Aloha. Thank you.